It's all a matter of perception. Where we stand in space and time. There is no you or me that I can see. Only delusions of the mind. Hello and welcome back to Soul Perspectives. I am Kip. And I'm Evan. And today we're going to share our perspectives on the HeartMath Institute. The HeartMath Institute, what a fascinating institution. Lots to share perspectives we, uh, on. Have lots of perspectives. We have visited them personally and met the founders and the leadership and many of the staff and team members who are down there doing this valuable, important work. As synchronicity would have it, yet again, as always, this week, where we had planned to air our Soul Seekers and our Soul Listens episodes this weekend, uh, having to do with the HeartMath Institute and the interviews that we conducted down there, I have started in the last week reading the book Healing When It Seems Impossible by Shiroko Sokic, MD, uh, who is a Western medicine doctor and Eastern medicine practitioner as well. And she's written a beautiful book. And just last night, as it would happen, as we're preparing to have this conversation and bask in this week of the HeartMath Institute and all their wisdom, this is what I read last night in a chapter called, a paragraph section called The Intelligence of the Human Heart. She says, the HeartMath Institute is a nonprofit organization that studies, researches, and ed educates people about the powerful intelligence of the human heart. Their mission is to help people feel better by reducing stress and implementing techniques to self-regulate emotions and foster emotional flexibility. Their clinical studies have repeatedly demonstrated that feelings of appreciation, care, and love, what they call renewing emotions, actually change our physiology, our community, and even the world. In fact, their findings say that our individual experience of love actually can influence the Earth's magnetic field. Wow. There's a lot there in that paragraph. Um, I'm so happy that we made a list of like maybe five things to focus on today. Just that we felt yeah. were the top five and most important and, and the ones that came to mind. Because so, there are so many things that they're doing down there that we can learn from and use. So the first one we've got that we want to uh, give our observation on is uh, science to observe and evaluate. These are scientists doing science. They're doing research, studies, they're writing papers, and they are influencing the body of science and the population of the human family as well. And, and this, to my mind, is really good science. This is science that's coming at it from the perspective of let's not try to prove how much control we have or how smart we are, but actually looking at our own innate abilities and helping us to find uh, the answers within ourselves in a way that sometimes science will become as, almost as dogmatic as religion. And they are so open and their approach to science is so beneficial to us um, actually becoming more one with our science rather than science being something separate from us. And something that we can learn from and utilize and apply. And I'll use this segue and context to bring up how I discovered the Heart Method Institute. I think you discovered it in the same way, from the same film. It was a documentary <laughs> called I Am. I believe it came out in around 2011. Great it's film. A great, great film, film made by Tom Shadiak, a Hollywood director who had uh, an epiphany and an awakening. Ace Ventura, literally the number one comedy director in Hollywood at the time. Right, who had a, a severe injury right. and an Head awakening injury. and discovered new territory in his own heart and his own mind and started to make the connection between the two. And in his travels and his research and his documenting and his creation of his documentary film, he discovered the HeartMath Institute among the beautiful redwoods and yep. the Santa Cruz mountains. And he paid a visit there himself as we did and one of the fascinating things that he learned, which he brings up and shares in his film, is one of the studies that they had done there, led by Roland McCready, the director of research, where they had set up 
the monitoring equipment to the brain and they were showing images on a computer screen, powerfully emotionally impactful images that the brain and heart and body would recognize before the eyes even registered that they came on the screen. In fact, before they even appeared on the screen, there was a heart intuitive anticipation of what was coming. And so the heart would actually react in an emotionally applicable, appropriate, expected manner for the type of imagery, i.e. a grotesque or hideous or you know, terrorizing image. The heart would go, whoa, before it even showed up on the screen. That's what fascinated Tom Shadick. It was fascinating to us as well, but that was just the impetus to go in and explore more and learn more about what they were doing, and they are doing a lot. You know, on a, on a larger scale, um what you touched on is really fascinating because they've done studies with um, a thing called a web bot and they saw that not only individually do we respond to events before they occur, collectively we do too. There's like before 9-11, hours before the attack, there's a huge spike in response. So we are literally responding to things. We have a sense of things before they happen. And again, back to what I said about the science, it's, it's drawing us into I've got these abilities that I don't even know about. And it's exciting for me when I see science going down that path and helping us discover our own um, human potential. And clearly what we're saying here, our perspective on the HeartMath Institute, fascinated, appreciative, uh, interested, curious, and we're learning and growing and even evolving certainly our thinking and our perspectives based on the things we're learning over there. What's another of the top five things about them that we love and believe are worthy of sharing? Well, the second, and it follows up nicely with number one, is technology to help biology and train emotions. This one really speaks to me and it's something that, um, when I was 17, I wrote this. I, I grew up on a farm. I used, I had, I actually was used to not having power sometimes, you know, uh, when, when my grandparents lived in Canada. And so to come here, I have a perspective of what it's like to be immersed in technology and absolutely devoid of technology. And, but I had no fear of technology, but at the same time, I probably came from a little bit more of a Luddite school. And I always saw technology, I always felt when I did get involved in technology, that used to its fullest potential, it becomes a tool of visualization to help us uh, visualize our own innate abilities. I even wrote something that, um, when I was like 17, it said, technology and progress, glib expressions we use to describe the chains of advancement that hold us back when the nourishment lies within the egg itself. And we keep searching out here when all, everything we need is in here. And when you see technology used for this, this is what I'd always saw it being used for. It's like, wow, we're such visual creatures. They're giving me a visual representation of what my heart's doing and the connection. It's, it's fantastic. And their technology and their practices is designed to help us regulate our emotions and our therefore our behavior it is especially been useful and beneficial in the context of high stress jobs and individuals and highly stressful situations especially for example law enforcement and military and with law enforcement brian k baker one of the executives at the HeartMath Institute said something that really touched me, how it was through the work they Very were beautiful. doing at the HeartMath Institute that he made that shift in his mind, in his thinking, in his perspective, that law enforcement were caregivers. They were first responders, and they weren't necessarily there to fight crime, but to protect and serve, to heal and care for those of us who needed the protection and the nurturing. The catch is though, they can very easily end up in a situation where they are wearing and carrying around with them all the stress from witnessing and participating in the situations that they're involved in. And that the technology developed at the HeartMath Institute, they can use to help them reset between one interface, one incident and the next to start fresh with a renewed sense of calm and alignment, coherence, they call it, at the HeartMath Institute to be able to face the next situation, whatever that may be. And it's just one example. They also have technology that is available to the public, little monitors and electrodes 
that we can use and employ to help us develop over time, build the, the muscle, so to speak, the proverbial muscle for self-regulating, aligning the heart and the brain into a state of coherence. And it's really using their technology and turning it into a practice. It all comes back to you ultimately. No, no technology is going to do the work you need to do for yourself. But it might be uh, fascinating to share with them what, a little bit about this technology and how it works and what it's actually measuring as far as frequency and the magnetometers and how these are um, actually the same vibrations as the planet itself. And they're using the same type of magnetometer on a much larger scale to measure these same frequencies of the planet, which much to their surprise is the same frequencies as our heart. Absolutely, and uh, frankly, you're you're the um, the king of frequency, <laughs> right? And so uh, you're the one who introduced me to documentaries like Resonance, right. of Frequency, and before these types of educational experiences, I wasn't aware of things like the Schumann resonance right. and frequency. And vibe. We're all energy. Everything's made up of energy. Everything's vibrating. What do atoms do? They just vibrate and, uh, and molecules are vibrating. So, um, yeah, to give us some of your well, experience and insight on, on, on frequencies and the vibrations and how this, I mean, Tes Tes you. Tesla was really, you know, the, the master of this and uh, Nikola, not Musk <laughs> was really the master of teaching us that we're all, everything is frequency and vibration. If you want to understand the mysteries of the universe, you look at frequencies and vibrations. That's where it starts. He, Evan uh, mentioned a film called Resonance Beans or Frequency, which I really high re highly recommend people go and see. Um, and what they talk about initially in this film is they establish what frequency is and why it's important to our beingness. And so they talk about this thing called the Schumann Resonance, which was discovered in the 1950s. It was a uh, Literally, a school teacher just gave his class a project. Hey, let's figure out what the resonance of the planet is. So they came up with this number around approximately 10 hertz. Um, it didn't go anywhere. It ended up getting published in the back of a small science journal somewhere. Well, a gentleman who was doing work to, dis to measure our, our brain waves found, wow, that number is really close to the frequency of our brain waves. I want to reach out to this guy and see if we can refine our work. Well, after they did more measurements and studies and took in all the variables, not only was it close, it was exact. Now, what makes this is amazing? Oh, okay, so, so what? Same frequency, 7.83 hertz. Well, any, that could happen, right? Not really. There's an infinity of frequencies. Then it gets even cooler. So the scientists who discovered the AIDS virus won the Nobel Prize for discovering the AIDS virus was doing work on water memory because water will re maintain the memory of substances and energies that are put into it. So he accidentally, it was a complete accident, put the 7.83 hertz through um, a vial, a test tube of purified water. In that purified water, DNA formed only with that 7.83 hertz, no other thing. Then it gets even crazier. That DNA then starts talking to another test tube and DNA forms in that test tube. This is how innate to our being this frequency is. And what that also tells me is if that is my brainwave, manifesting DNA, we can manifest anything we want if we just learn how to use these tools that HeartMath and other, um, other new technology companies are now forging the, um, the new way forward with. Hopefully you start to getting an idea. We're talking about valuable, potentially very impactful stuff here. And that literally reality shifting, reality shifting stuff. And so these are our first two things that we love about the HeartMath. They're scientists doing science, and they're working with and creating and developing technology that can have a tangible impact. Shall we go to number three? Okay. I got time. And it kind of ties into it to what we're just saying here. Big solutions for global coherence and uniting human family. Exactly. Human residents, the whole planet, global coherence. They talk about the three levels of coherence at the HeartMath Institute, the personal coherence, the heart-mind connection, the regulating of emotions and behavior and reactions and responses. I dare say this melds just nicely with reprogramming, reconditioning our subconscious minds to offer different reactions and responses to our environment, to what we take in. And then we have the next level of coherence, which is social coherence. That's the level where it's now between us and each other, our tribe, our community. 
And then we have what we just mentioned, the global coherence, where those cells of humans in the superorganism of humanity influence and impact each other as they vibrate out, ripple, affect, and resonate each other. And then you have that global coherence level where we're operating in harmony as one human family around the planet. And you mentioned after September 11th, 2001, before. The, the before, right. and then after there have been some of these large scale meditations across right. the globe. And uh, easily this measurable. is what Kip mentioned, the magnetrometers that the HeartMath Institute has installed at strategic yeah. locations literally around the globe where they're measuring these things. And that during these times of massive human collaboration, if you will, of emotions, connections, or synchronicity of emotions, right. that there is a measurable, palpable response in frequencies. And that is all part of the concept of coherence. And, and here's something that's really important, I think, to point out. This is going on all the time since the beginning of time. This is nothing new. We haven't made some new discovery. It's, it's been happening since the beginning of our species and before and since life came into being and, and before that. Now, if you look at the world as it is now, you see the vibration that we've been sharing with one another and how we're impacting one another. The, real, the reason the world is in the state of turmoil it is right now is because that's the vibration we've been sharing with one another. What we're saying here is if we now start to consciously evolve, these become tools for us rewriting our story. Any tools we can get are going to help us uh, turn that page and be able to, that we collectively decide we're co-creating this world for ourselves. And when we turn that page to the next page, there's going to come a day where the next page says, and then the humans decided to dot, dot, dot. And that's where we fill in the blanks. And that kind of leads nicely to number four, individual solutions for handling immediate problems. Exactly. So this is... Again, these are the top five things we love about the HeartMath Institute, where we see the potential, where we've been fascinated, and we've hinted and talked about this all along the way so far. It's that individual ability to self-regulate, to achieve coherence, which is a synchronicity between the heart and mind, and the importance of doing that. And if, if, if we are anyone who proclaims ourselves a change maker, an evolving being, a light worker, an indigo child, a new ager, just any kind of forward thinking, forward looking human who believes their part, their role, their opportunity, their purpose in life is to contribute to the greater good or the forward momentum of humanity, our collective growth as a species and our, ma our maturation as emotional beings, then great, let's employ more of that and let's find, discover those and, and teach and share them with each other and support each other in applying them so we can all benefit. And, and applying them is a big thing. You gave the example of like police and, and military, of the high stress they're under and finding that way to calm themselves down in stressful situations. People are listening that if you're not in the military or you have a certain opinion about the military or police, maybe that doesn't quite connect with you. So think about you're in, a, you're in an argument with your spouse or your loved one or your child. And you're like, rage, and you're just gonna explode. Then think about when you take that moment, you take that breath, and all of a sudden you're calm. I can feel it washing over me just in doing that. It's amazing That's what we're talking it's about. It's amazing. It's just that simple. Yeah. It's not magic. A deep breath, a count to 10, and we talk oh. about those, but how often do we really, really practice them, especially in the heat of the moment when they'll do us the most benefit? In fact, in impact. fact, take it just right now. Stop for a moment. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're stressing out about, just let everything out of your, just exhale, let it all out. Just take a deep breath in. Feel your heart beating first. Don't think, just feel your heart beating and let that resonate up into your mind. And as you're doing that, let your exhale slowly out through your mouth. How often do we even take a time every day just to feel our heart beating? How beautiful is that? The breath has the power to calm the mind, which has the power to calm the blood pressure, which has the power to help us reset and come from a new place of thought, intelligence, engaging the mind, and being in coherence with the resonating, harmonious being. We have the potential to be 
And what we're really aligning ourselves with ultimately is the universe itself. The universe right now is conspiring for us to succeed in every, in every action. We are the ones that have been resisting, an, 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 again, an entire creation that exists for our benefit. So what's number five? Actually? I don't know. Oh, we got to go to number five. Okay. Oh, I hate this one. Love-based people at the Heart Math Institute. Man, are these people so mellow. We want to send out our love and appreciation to Catherine Floriano, to Brian, Brian K. Baker, Baker, to Roland McCready, oh. and of course to Sarah Childre, who is heading up the operation now, and of course to her late husband, Doc Childre, the founder, originator, the mastermind behind the entire concept behind the HeartMath Institute and the type of research that they are doing. And the reason we're giving these uh, shout outs and, and thank yous is because these people at the HeartMath Institute, they practice what they preach. And when you're in their presence, you feel it. They devoted their lives to it. Yeah. And the entire team operate on such a harmonious, mellow level. Their vibe resonates pure love and we felt it a hundred percent and you'll notice it in our interviews yeah. with Brian and with Roland in the the shows coming up this weekend Soul Seekers and Soul Perspectives both of which will feature interviews from the HeartMath Institute. Don't you love when a perspective show ends on love? Yes I love that. I do love that. So these have been our perspectives on the HeartMath Institute. We're again going to show you a lot more from them this week on our programs. We thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We request respectfully that you will join our tribe. Come to our website at souldocumentary.love. Click on the contact field, uh, sign up on our mailing list. We share things through our mailing list that people don't see anywhere else. We would love to welcome you into our tribe. and. Furthermore, while you got a second it's in front of you, click the like, type in a comment, any question or comment you want to share or response and reaction, and hit the subscribe button and the notifications because we've got so much material we are so, so excited much. to share with you. And we we'll love you. We love you. And we'll see you next week on, on Soul, Soul Perspectives. Perspectives. And after all, two, three, four. It's all a matter of perception Where we stand in space and time There's no you or me that I can see Only delusions of the mind